this is an overview of uh, a 22 mile loop off of the 4th of July trailhead that uh, takes you through a bunch of lakes in the white clouds. We start uh, as a reference point from Stanley, Idaho, 15 miles south of Stanley, Idaho is 4th of July Road. Uh, we go in 4th of July Road, it's 10 miles to get to the 4th of July Trailhead. The road is uh, primitive, so uh, be advised that you know it might be kind of tough to get in there with a car. Trailhead is pretty simple, it does have a bathroom, there's no water, you want water, you go down to the creek, there's no place to camp. Uh, from the 4th of July trailhead to 4th of July lake is only about one and a half miles roughly. The loop is shown here. Basically, we go from uh, before 4th of July lake, we go into the Bourne Lake area, up over a pass through the Four Lake Basins, down through Quiet Lake, Noisy Lake, down to Baker Lake, we find the correct trail up past uh, Castle Lake and we're going to go alongside of Castle Peak, around Castle Peak basically. Uh, up over a pass, now that we're going around Castle Peak, we drop into the Chamberlain Basin. We have the Lower Chamberlain Lake, the Upper Chamberlain Lake, and then from there we go over a couple of passes and back into the Washington Basin and uh, Washington Lake, Fourth of July Lake. Um, pretty much where we started. The loop is 22 miles, as I said. A um, couple of things to point out about this that will help your trip be better. Uh, one is is that as you head over to Bourne Lakes, it's four miles. It's kind of dry, so um, if, those of you that pump your water, um, something to keep in mind. You might want to carry a water bottle with you. When you get to the end, Bourne Lake, there's a pass we're going to go over. I don't know the exact best way to go over this pass, but here's how I did it. We came out of the bottom of the lake, got up on a little bit of a ridge in the scree, and then I took the scree field up and I went up through this chute. This is steep, it's nasty, it's loose rock, it's dangerous. Lots of people do it. I haven't heard of anybody getting hurt, but just be advised. Um, if you're afraid of heights, or afraid of climbing, this might not be a good uh, good trip. But it's not super hard. I made it, and I'm not a I'm not a mountain climber by any means. Over this nice pass, there's a trail that takes you down to uh, between Emerald and Cornus Lake. Uh, the Four Lakes Basin is very open, mostly rock. Uh, this picture here from Google Earth is taken in December 2010. In August, there won't be much water, well, it won't be much, won't be any snow up here. The green does represent trees, I suppose you could camp, but uh, I suspect it's pretty wild weather up in this. Uh, all these lakes are at 10,000 plus foot. You take the outflow from Cornus Lake and follow it down to Quiet Lake. This is fairly easy to kind of navigate by eyeball to get down here. Quiet Lake is a great big lake, beautiful lake, excellent fishing. Uh, this side of the lake is too steep to do anything on. Uh, this side, particularly this inlet end right here, is some excellent camping right there. And of course, excellent fishing at the inlet. Um, there's some camping right in here. The rest of this is pretty much bare. Uh, there's some camping, camping sites here in the outflow of Quiet Lake. Great big lake. Uh, lots of wind storms do come in through there pretty good, uh, but really nice lake. Trail on the outflow of a Quiet Lake takes you down to Noisy Lake, excellent fishing. Um, obviously much smaller lake. Uh, lots of camping right in here. This side is pretty sheer. Uh, really good fishing on Noisy Lake. Really nice lake. So down out outflow of Noisy Lake, there's a trail that uh, will that follows the outflow will take you down to Baker Lake. As you go down this uh, headwall here, uh, just be advised that this this thing is steep, and if you're not careful, uh, you could fall. So it's it's I'm not going to say it's 
you know, super treacherous, but it's, it's bad enough that um, you really do need to be cautious. Okay, Baker Lake, nothing special about it, but it is a lake. And um, what I want to point out is right here is a bridge, and right here at this bridge is the junction of a number of trails. Now, there's, uh, there's two, the reason I want to point this out is there's, really there's three trails. There's two that we're really interested in. The, uh, you can kind of see that there's some trails going through up here in the hills. The trail that stays closest to the bottom of the valley is an old trail, and it's kind of nasty in my opinion. Um, if you are on this trail, you will go by a shelter cabin up here past Castle Lake. A better trail is a newer trail, which is a little bit to the side of the old trail. You get on it. The, the better trail by either bushwhacking over about a quarter of a mile or you can backtrack from Baker on the trail back a little ways and pick up the new trail. The new trail is much better. Regardless of which trail you take, you're going to go up, um, basically go past Castle Lake. You can go in there if you want. And we're going to head up over a pass. Now the pass here is zigzaggy. Uh, switchbacky uh, pass is typical, you know, you're going to go up over 10,000 foot. So Baker is, I think, 8,500. You're going to go up over here, it's 10,000 and change. Uh, no water in the late summer. So from Baker to this pass, um, you better be carrying, you probably should be carrying some water with you. It's a little too far to be just blown with nothing. So we go off around the pass, and then we're going to head over to uh, Lower Chamberlain Lake. So we get down to uh, Lower Chamberlain Lake. Um, late summer, there's not a lot of water in it. The best camping is on this side of it, the south, whatever this is, southeast. The, uh, the other side of it has some camping. Um, kind of steep on the back side. It does have fish in it. It's not great fishing, but it does have fish. Uh, about three quarters of a mile hike up to the upper Chamberlain Lake, which uh, also has some camping on it. And along this edge over here is, is a good camping um, and excellent fishing. Yeah, by far the best lake I fish. Great big fish. Good one to take pictures of. When you're leaving the Chamberlain Basin, it's important that you uh, get on the right trail, and the trail, the correct trail is not marked, so it comes out of the bottom of the lower Chamberlain Lake, right along here, and it heads over and goes along the bottom of, uh, I think this is called Quiet Lake or something, but basically this, this little lake right here. My, uh, my little um, path doesn't quite go right, but basically you're going to go from the bottom of that lake, you're going to cross over one pass to get to a trailhead that will take you over to uh, um, Fourth of July Lake, and then you got to go up and over another pass to get into Washington, the basin. But I want to tell you about this trek from Lower Chamberlain uh, to this other trailhead. It's four and a half miles, and late summer there's no water. So you need to plan for that. It's four and a half miles, no water, and you're going to be up and over some passes. When you get down into the Washington Basin, not much elevation change. I mean, it does climb, but it's not too bad uh, to get up over the last pass in here. Uh, once you're over that pass, then it flattens out. Not much elevation change through Washington at 4th of July Lake. Washington, really pretty lake, a really nice lake. Uh, well worth the extra three quarters of a mile hike from 4th of July if you want a little more seclusion and much better fishing. 4th of July does have fish in it, and of course since it's only about a mile and a half or so from the trailhead, it's, a, it's the best lake to uh, take your kids on their first overnight. So there you go, um, a 22 mile loop covers a bunch of lakes. The only gotchas are going over this pass and then finding the better trail uh, once we leave once you leave Baker Lake and of course you need to be planning for water 
especially for those of you that uh, are carrying a pump and want to just uh, tank up on demand. Uh, this is, a, in my opinion, this is probably one of the best leaps I've taken to uh, see the large portion of the white clouds. And I think it's well worth your time. I think it's, um, it, in my opinion, it's of moderate difficulty, so it's not super bad. Um, you know, you could do if you're really gung ho, you could do it in a day, I suppose. But most people take a couple days and take it easy and enjoy the scenery and uh, enjoy the. Uh, and some of these lakes really excellent fishing. So I hope this helps you as you're planning your trip. Bye.